This is Intel stock price over the past five years. It clearly shows that the company has been having a difficult time. This is the stock price of AMD. It is better. The price is at least higher than it was five years ago, something we cannot say about Intel. But check this out. This is the stock price of Nvidia over the same time frame. As you can see, Nvidia has seen explosive growth over the past five years. This surge propelled Nvidia to a market capitalization of $3.6 trillion, becoming the largest company in the world by the beginning of 2025, before losing that title to Apple a while later. If you come across headlines discussing Nvidia's growth, chances are that the headline mentions AI and how this is the main factor behind its surge, but that explanation lacks a lot of context. After all, Intel, AMD and Nvidia all operate in the same industry. So why has only Nvidia benefited so dramatically from the AI boom? Before we go further, we need to understand something about processing chips. There are two processing chips that you need to know about. CPUs and GPUs, and for this topic you need to understand the difference between these two. A CPU is a central processing unit. It's like the general purpose brain of your computer, good at doing many different tasks but it usually handles them one at a time or just a few at once. A GPU or graphics processing unit is different. It can run thousands of these tasks at the same time. So, while a CPU might have a handful of cores designed for flexibility, a GPU has thousands of smaller cores designed to do one thing really well – repeat a simple task over and over, very fast and all at once. This makes them much faster than CPUs. And Nvidia's story is all about GPUs. Nvidia started back in 1993. At that time, CPUs were the main focus of computing innovation. Intel and AMD were locked in a race to make CPUs faster and more powerful. GPUs, on the other hand, were mostly an afterthought, seen as niche hardware for gamers or professionals, not as something that would drive the future of computing. But Nvidia saw something others didn't. The founders believed that video games were one of the most computationally demanding problems of the time. They also believed that the gaming industry was going to explode in size. So they decided to go all in on GPUs, betting that graphics processing would become a central part of computing. That early bet gave Nvidia a massive head start. By going all in on CPUs long before anyone else, Nvidia had years to fine tune its designs, improving performance and solve the kinds of problems no one else was even thinking about yet. This gave them experience and experience translated into better and better GPUs. As gaming demands increased and 3D graphics, real-time rendering and simulation became more complex, Nvidia kept pushing the limits of what their chips could do. Then, in 2006, Nvidia launched CUDA, short for Compute Unified Device Architecture. CUDA allowed developers to use Nvidia GPUs for general-purpose computing, Things totally unrelated to graphics, like simulations, deep learning or scientific research. Think of CUDA as a set of tools that unlock the full power of NVIDIA GPUs for any kind of high-performance computing. This meant researchers and engineers could write code that used thousands of GPU cores to process huge amounts of data in parallel. Over the years, CUDA grew to include libraries, frameworks and community support that made it incredibly easy to develop AI models, train neural networks and run massive workloads. And all of it worked best on NVIDIA hardware. So while other companies tried to catch up, NVIDIA had already built the platform that everyone else was building on top of. Then, in 2022, ChatGPT was released and the world realized that AI is the future of technology. This kicked off an AI race where tech companies competed to train larger and larger models and develop better and better products. But in order for them to train these models and develop these products, they needed GPUs. Cloud providers like AWS, Microsoft and Google Cloud and AI startups and labs like OpenAI and Anthropic started filling their data centers with NVIDIA chips. The years of experience building GPUs, years of software development with CUDA 
and years of community adoption and industry trust meant that NVIDIA's GPU infrastructure was years ahead of its competitors. That's why, even though Intel and AMD were big names in the chip industry, they weren't positioned the same way when the AI wave hit. Instead, NVIDIA has become a natural monopoly, not because it blocked others from entering the market, but because its product and ecosystem are so far ahead that competition is nearly irrelevant. Currently, the company controls between 70% and 95% of the AI chip market. This natural monopoly is NVIDIA's greatest advantage. It has created a feedback loop. More users mean more developer engagement, which drives more software innovation, which in turn increases the demand for NVIDIA hardware. This cycle has made it extraordinarily difficult for competitors to catch up. This was best described by NVIDIA's CEO, who once claimed that even if a competitor's chip were free, it still wouldn't be cheap enough, because the total value NVIDIA offered was unmatched. And this dominance has translated into NVIDIA's financials as well. This is a chart of NVIDIA's revenue since 2019. As we can see, the company has increased its revenue by almost 13 times in just six years. However, to get a better understanding at how this growth has happened, we need to look at revenue segments. NVIDIA reports five end markets in its financial statements. Gaming, data center, professional virtualization, automotive, and OEM and other. With that in mind, this is how the revenue chart looks once we break it down into these five categories. As you can see, the data center market has absolutely exploded over the past two years and is the primary driver of NVIDIA's revenue growth. Data center is how NVIDIA categorizes revenue from AI chips. While revenue growth is very impressive, what is even more impressive is NVIDIA's margins. In fiscal year 2025, they reported a gross margin of 75%. This resulted in a net profit margin of 55%, which is extremely impressive. Just for reference, Apple reports a 24% net profit margin. So, being a sort of natural monopoly, supplying a product that is extremely in demand does indeed have its benefits. However, NVIDIA now faces a new set of challenges. One of the most immediate challenges is the trade war between the US and China. NVIDIA was banned from selling its powerful H100 AI chip to China, with the US citing fears that China might use these chips to develop a military supercomputer. So, as a response, NVIDIA developed the H20 chip, a purposefully made chip to accommodate the US export controls to China. This is a less powerful chip and thus, the company was allowed to sell to China. However, amid escalating trade tensions, the US has also restricted the sale of this chip. Because of this, NVIDIA expects to take a $5.5 billion hit in the first quarter of 2025. But NVIDIA's biggest threat is the rise of cheap AI. A few months ago, Chinese AI research lab DeepSeek released its open-source AI model, DeepSeek R1, which has drawn significant attention in the tech world. According to a paper authored by the lab, the DeepSeek R1 model outperforms cutting-edge models such as OpenAI's O1 and Meta's Llama across multiple benchmarks. This is impressive given that the model is also open source, cost effective and requires significantly less computational power compared to its rivals. In Silicon Valley, most big tech giants have been relying on brute force to gain an edge in AI. This means amassing larger stocks of GPU chips and servers and running long training periods. But DeepSeek's approach changed this because it showed that these models can be efficiently trained without spending a fortune on GPUs and servers. This is a problem because less computational power means less demand for NVIDIA chips, which, as we established earlier, is the driving force behind NVIDIA's skyrocketing revenue. DeepSeek may be the first, but it won't be the last. If more AI companies figure out how to train smarter, not harder, NVIDIA's grip on the future could start to loosen. And that raises a big question. Can NVIDIA stay on top in a world where AI is no longer expensive?